everybody. This is Rob Keats with the Freedom Report. This is your report for May 23rd, 2024. It is a Thursday. And as promised, we're going to talk about social credit system in China and how that could be brought to a country, a township, a community near you and the dangers of it and how close it is to actually being rolled out. Now, I've talked a little bit about this before, but I really want to expound on the subject and what uh, I think is coming, what it could be used for. It, it could be a hideously horrible system that you want to be a part of. But I've got a video to show you, and then I'm going to show you a graphic over how the Chinese system works. Now, I, I personally think this is going to be rolled out worldwide, and there are going to be some enablers. Some of the enablers are going to be the central bank digital currencies, because in order to enact the social credit system, you need a way to control. And you can control things like movement, transportation, buying certain goods, and things like that. But having a CBDC allows push button, push button electronic control and even allows AI to make decisions so you don't have to have an army of bureaucrats doing this. So AI has a role in that as well. Right now, AI is used a lot to build images or to write something or to do a lot of things that's really cool. AI also could be used to power surveillance systems. Think about AI could be used to monitor traffic. On AI could be used to... Uh, you know, gather information. Uh, it can also be used to turn things on and off based on if you hit certain criteria in your social credit score. And one other enabler is going to be our expanding mobile networks. You may wonder how that would be possible for, for the system to work. Couldn't you just hide out or not participate in it? Well, if you have a device and it's got 5G on it, or if it's even mobile connected, but especially 5G because the amount of antennas that they'll put, especially in urban areas to to basically allow for that speed. What that also does is it allows more points of control. So it's very difficult to sort of get out of this system. And it, you know, so 5G allows the system to kind of work everywhere to travel with you. Even if you get rid of your phone, um, anything that you do is gonna be connected to the system. It's gonna be online. So you're either doing it at home or wherever you are. And with all of those components I just talked about, you can put them all together and basically build a complete control system. And that complete control system is used to control the populace. It could be used to do things like preventing, you know, it could, it could interrupt the Bill of Rights. So it could prevent you from uh, socializing or talking about certain subjects or talking about certain things. Well, think about the, in the Bill of Rights, the right to assemble, the freedom of assembly, the freedom of free speech. Those can be curtailed. The right to own a weapon, or the right to do a lot of things uh, can be completely controlled by this. So without kind of beating that topic, more before we get into it. Uh, here's a video. Uh, this came across Instagram. Um, this gentleman's talking about, I want you guys to listen to what is actually exists in China right now and what is being developed and will, will be, I believe, brought to your doorstep very soon. Uh, so here we go. China, for example, if a traffic camera catches you jaywalking in China, the digital ID system has you, has your blood now, has your genetic code, has your photograph, it can identify how you walk. So mm. even if you can't see a, a face, you can be picked up by gate. It will convict you of jaywalking and take money out of your bank account with no intermediating judiciary at all and show a picture of you to the people in the neighborhood so they know that you have jaywalked and reduce your social credit score. Mm. And if your social credit score falls below a certain level, then you can't buy drinks from a vending machine. You can't play video games. You can't go on a train. You can't get out of your 15-minute city. All that's already in place in China. So it's very interesting what he was saying. Think about that. It's basically total control. It's control over you and your actions. And they can do it based on several biometric uh, pieces of information. Your gait, uh, how you interact, those things. Uh, we all have, it's like a fingerprint how we walk and all that kind of stuff. It's not just your traditional fingerprints or your eyes. Uh, they've had the technology now to track people based on how they walk, how they dress, um, how they use their arms and those types of things can be used to, be, to build a profile on you. So in other words, your very individuality that makes you unique uh, is, is being programmed into the system and being used against you to identify you. So even if you're trying not to be part of the system, it's very hard to get out of this system as they have it in China right now. And if you don't think that, you know, as we get into the big crash and the big reset, that a lot of these other governments aren't going to buy the system and start to put it in place. I got another thing coming for you. Think about red light, uh, uh, red, uh, red light cameras 
and how many tickets you may have got or some of you know may have got because you ran a red light or you didn't stop properly or whatever the case may be and you get it in the mail. Well, technically that's not, it, it's civil because it's a traffic violation, but they're fining you. Uh, and I don't believe it's constitutional. And I don't believe it's even supported by local ordinances and codes. In fact, there was a big fight in an area in a city uh, just to the north of me, a pretty affluent area where the people fought back when they started implementing this camera. This camera was sending out tickets and the people just revolted and they had money to fight it. They had the money to hire lawyers and stuff. And eventually they pulled the system out just because of pressure of the, of the locals said basically, yeah, we're not putting up with this. Get rid of it. It's not solving a problem. We don't want it. And that intense political pressure did it. But but there's still exist everywhere. Uh, if I drive anywhere in Dallas, I'm super careful. Not that I don't normally stop at red lights, but I'm super careful to make pronounced stops and make sure because it, they still have them there and the cameras can get very aggressive and there are a lot in the suburbs. Well, that's one part of the system. Think about cameras that are going to go up everywhere. Uh, one of the things that I realized when I was in technology, in the technology field, they have cameras and 5G antennas and networking and all of this infrastructure put in place that looks like other objects. It's not like you can see the camera on the building or in the shop or on your street. It looks like something else. It could be a tree. It could be a bush. It could be a traffic light with a camera. You know, it could look like something else. And they're all interconnected because of uh, the enhancements in the network that are being put out. So the 5G network is sort of the, the rails, if you will. And it's not really the controller. It just allows the information. And it's not just 5G. It's, it, it's the advent of more fiber to locations, the spread of the internet in general. 5G is just, 4G and 5G are just sort of the mobile component. Of it, but the 5G in particular allows all of that processing to happen. And the structure of that network has changed such that you can actually, what we call network slicing, take a single person, everything they're doing, putting into an individual network slice, and it has a certain amount of bandwidth, but it also means that they can track, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if you add that to like a social control system, tie it into your phone. Uh, and what he's saying is you'll have a social credit score, plus they're going to shame you by throwing it out in the community. Well, how are they going to do that? Over billboards? over maybe local news. How are they going to do that? And how would they do it? Well, it needs a network. Check. We just talked about that. It needs a system. Check. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And it needs the ability of AI in a system to quickly do all of this stuff in real time. So they're going to shame you, reduce your social credit score and do something. And what that is, is just to get you to behave a certain way. It's a control. And so anything around all of your freedoms and the constitution, all that stuff would effectively be null and void because it's it's the rise of it's not only the rise of the police state it's a, it's a rise of a control mechanism it doesn't matter what's on paper in terms of your constitution once they get this into place you're basically screwed um going over what this system actually looks like we've shown this before in the program this is china's social credit system uh this is i've seen this on visual capitalist here it's at bertelsman uh stiff tongue if you look at the url at the top you can see where it's at but you basically can see it has tiers and there's a point system. There are, um, it has gaining points and losing points. It's like a ladder system. And if you do all the things that they want you to do in this system, all the good things, the green stuff, um, well, the high scores can lead to all these things. But if you do all the stuff like praise the government, helping the poor, having a good financial credit history, you get points up. If you do stuff like traffic offenses, protesting illegally, however the authorities define it, um, not visiting your parents, posting anti-government messages, maybe eating too much of wrong foods. Maybe you're drinking a soda in New York and they don't want you to drink a soda, soda pop. And they say, no, you should be drinking the smoothie. That's how they're going to control behavior because you can either put laws in place, but look at all the protests and, and people ignoring the laws. Well, how are you going to ignore the laws when they're programmed into your very, abil your very ability to interact in society, to pay for stuff, to travel, to have a place to live. They can probably kick you out of your, apart your apartment or your home. It's a total control system. And why are they doing a total control system? If you look at the Chinese in particular, they know that when people, when we go through deep recessions and people are starving, they revolt and it's led to the overthrow of governments. And so the Chinese have been looking at a way to prevent that. And they know the next crash is coming. By the way, it's not all the Chinese fault. A lot of it has to do with the US dollar and all of that. But I would think a lot of world leaders, if some of the insanity policies we've seen so far, there are a lot of people out there that are going to want these control systems to deal with what's coming up in the Great Reset. Because think about the Great Reset. 
they're going to get rid of a lot of your rights. They're going to reset the system and be able to, to reduce what you make, tax your labor, you know, as much as they want without you controlling it. Well, a lot of people aren't going to stand for that. There are still enough men in, in Western societies that are going to stand up to this system and they can throw us all in war, but you're not going to get rid of all the men that will stand up. There are still people that will stand up and say, this is not right. So war is even not enough. They know that they have to close the loop. They have to close the gap and put in total control. And who is they? Well, it just depends. Look at where these systems are being implemented right now and where they could be implemented. And, um, and then, then you have your answers. Will this go on all across the world? I don't know. But when you're looking at the rollout of the enhanced networks, you're looking at the rollout of CBDCs, those tend to be pretty universal. And when you listen to bureaucrats across the spectrum, almost no, anywhere you listen to them, they're talking about um, you know, the need for control through various mechanisms, climate legislation, um, the need for a social system or socialism that controls people's behavior, how people that are rugged individualists are now terrorists, you know, maybe they're domestic in nature or some other. This would allow them to take all of those potential policy objectives, which haven't really taken as much root in the Western world. They, they've been fomented, but it's not the law of the land, so to speak. And they can't, they can't take uh, the people that want to do this. The controllers, I call them society, can't do this right now in the current system. But if they get this system in place, which occurs after a reset in which we suspend constitutionality or the right to bear arms or protesting uh, martial law, for example, you could have the system built into place on top of that if the leaders in society thought that's what they needed to get control. And a lot of people implement this will think that they're doing good. A lot of them won't be, you know, crazy people. They'll think that through the chaos, this is how we get to the other side. And a lot of people will, will buy into this, by the way, as well. There'd be a lot of re regular everyday people are like, yeah, because when the chaos gets so great, when you, you can't feed yourself and there's wars going on and there's chaos everywhere, which the Great Reset, probably uh, a lot of this is going to happen. Um, it's, we're just going through turbulent times. Um, you can use that crisis basically to put the system in a place and they already have it working in one place. And if they already have the tech and the system working in one place, you can carbon copy that to other places. It may take a bit of time, but I think that's actively being worked on. When I looked at the central bank digital currencies, uh, they're here and they're doing the testing between different jurisdictions around the world. That piece has been put in place. A lot of the network upgrades and the connectivity has been put into place. A lot of the attitudes around socialism and put into place through the schools where a lot of people are going to accept this. Not everybody will. We're probably headed to another war in which a lot of the strong people in society are going to go to war and we may lose a lot of those leaders. Um, and so all of these things are going to lead to when it comes to a crisis point, are the people really going to stand up and defend their rights? Or is this type of system going to be put into place to address the chaos? Uh, the Great Reset is not just a financial reset, it is a cultural and political reset. It is a reset over the freedom of humanity. And think how long we've been free since our Declaration of Independence. And we became the freest nation on earth and a lot of other nations followed. How long has that been? About 250 years? In, in the course of human history, how long has man really been free versus how long have there been systems in place to keep them down? The Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, and uh, that system which didn't allow people you know, education and understanding how, you know, how stuff really works. Um, the systems before where you had the, the tribalism and the, the tribal leaders that ruled through fear, the Genghis Khans of the world, th th those types of things. How long have we really had these free societies on earth? Well, it coincided with the printing press and the ability of man to think for themselves and a place to go, the U S and then take that idea, let freedom take root and spread to the rest of the world. But and it's taken a while, but through the trial and tribulation we have coming up, the controllers in society have come back and said, no, we need to take over. You had your chance. Uh, look at what's happened. Now, a lot of the controllers society may have been the ones that caused the problem. We don't know. But in any case, they're going to want to control. Uh, it's very clearly that's what's being rolled out if you if you add the pieces together. And, you know, will we will we give into it? Will we become the slaves? You know, something that that we're really concerned about. And when I talk about societal change and cultural change, this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. I'm not just talking about general attitudes toward things. I'm talking about the ability of people to lose their freedom and living in a very dystopian type of society. And one of the things that I want to talk about 
and upcoming videos is culture, uh, popular culture in particular, music, movies, TV, news media, even social media to an extent, and how that's been used to propagate certain ideas. Like if you look at the amount of dystopian movies out in the last 10 to 20 years, I think it's a type of um, uh, uh, training to, to get people to accept a potential certain future. Because if you're told over and over and over, a, a great event's gonna happen, and we need some sort of societal control after that, and you have all of this media going on for an entire generation, eventually people are gonna believe it and they're gonna accept it when it comes. It's like, oh, I'm so glad we had all these people that you know, prepared something from when all this happened, and of course it happened. We've been seeing movies, Everybody, we all knew. you know. In other words, they're taking the Schopenhauer quote and they're using it against the populace. Uh, truth, when it's first received, is ridiculed at first and violently opposed and accepted as fact. Well, they're trying to rewrite the story and create a different truth through media to get you to believe it. And so they will be accepted as fact when the Great Reset ha happens. And then, oh, by the way, we just have all these control systems that are put into place because, God, all this awful stuff happened. And you know what's going to happen. We told you for 20 years. See, didn't you see? And it's going to be turned on its head. And I think they're going to flip that. They whoever the controllers are, are going to flip that switch. And again, I think a lot of them believe in what they're doing. Uh, if you, Certainly, if you read the papers from the technocrats and the books and things, and especially in education, but also in the medical field, the science fields, anthropological fields, um, all that kind of stuff, you know, what you see is this move towards technocracy, the move towards we need greater control. We need more top-down centralization of government. We need more constraints. Uh, we need to solve the world's problems proactively. Uh, and certainly the system that I just described and show you would be a way for those. Now, could there be some good outcomes of that? Sure, you could reduce crime, for example, and things like that. And it definitely will be used. Crime and theft and money laundering and all those things will be used as reasons for the system. But in reality, how many of us are engaging in that? They're criminals that do it. But the vast majority of us are just law-abiding citizens just trying to you know, get along in our day. Does application of that system on us, is that justified? Probably not. But that's probably how they're going to try to do it. And again, I'm using this mysterious they because in some cases you can read the technocratic papers, you can see the government officials, you can see the people that would be in favor of this, you can see the media members. Um, and a lot of the population may right now would say you're crazy, but if they go through a major crisis, they may be shell-shocked and just accept anything to get out of that crisis to get out of that situation. So I think we'll be surprised at how many people fall into line, you know, if we have the big crisis or a series of crises, and then they, they try to roll this out in the Western world. I think we'll be surprised. It'd be a big chunk of the population that says, just please save us. We're starving to death. People are dying or, you know, there's even to the extent there's no opportunity and there's maybe there's no electricity, you know, just the amount of pressure applied to what people are used to now to get them to accept this. And how bad will that be? Probably leads to how many people will accept it. And so now is the time to protest this. Now is the time to be aware of it. Now is the time to say this is not what we want. Now is the time to have that social conversation. And hopefully this video is a part of that. And hopefully you guys are watching. The social credit system is here. It's been implemented in several places, uh, along with other advancements in technology and AI and networking and uh, CBDCs. That's kind of the global system of control that could come about if the right crisis prompts it and enough people are not aware of it and they accept it uh, through the avoidance of other types of pain, you know, which, which in a lot of cases could be understandable uh, that you're going through that pain and you want something to save you. But will you grasp for the control system or you grasp for freedom and personal responsibility? So ending up this segment, if you don't want this system, you have to take responsibility for yourself and you have to be vocal about this and you have to help educate other people. Um, certainly I can do this on the show. Other people have done it, but you guys are going to need to, to talk about it. We need our town halls. We need our meetings. We need people to, to talk about this and discuss it and realize it's here. Uh, I keep saying this, these components to a total control system are here and whether or not they've been implemented or whether or not you think they could be, we need to have that conversation before the opportunity exists for them to be so that we know what it looks like and what the possible alternatives are and how to maybe we, you know, have other solutions ready rather than maybe this narrative that's going to be pushed out when the collapse comes. And, and I guarantee you the collapse is coming. The data is all there. It's just a matter of when it happens. Okay. Um, 
And, and that's my worry. That's my worry that we don't have these conversations before the collapse happens. This is a system put in place. Maybe it lasts a long time. Maybe it doesn't. But the history of men shows the control systems over the populace have been implemented in various degrees across most of the world for the vast, you know, 99% of the time that we, that humans have been on this earth. So don't think that this isn't something that would eventually be proposed. The history of humankind is enslavement and suppression and uh, other things. All you have to do is read history. And we have this very brief period of time in which we've been free. Well, if we want to extend that, we have to take responsibility and show we can be and not allow the controllers, whoever they may happen to be, to, to say you, you're no longer capable of governing yourselves. And that's why the Constitution, honest money, all those things are very important. That's why we t I'm tying this into sound money, into gold and silver, to financial freedom, and those types of things, because it's all part of the same overall uh, argument and state of being here for us in the West and in the U.S. Uh, one one other quick thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Tuesday's video, I talked about the breakout in silver. Now we're having a big pullback in silver. That's to be expected. I could see silver going down to 25 to 28 and gold coming down to 2200. But we are in the breakout and this is going to take time. I think it will occur over a couple of years, but we're in the big breakout where you're going to see more ups than downs. You will see some plateaus and pullbacks, but you see more ups and downs. And I think going forward, I don't think we're looking at $20 silver for an extended period of time or anything like that. We can have pullbacks. But to me, those are buying opportunities if you're going to be in the precious metals and you decide that's what you want to do after you did all your own research and decided that for yourself, which is what you need to do. Uh, don't take it from me. But certainly looking at the charts and looking at the fundamentals point to, toward a long-term multi-year gold and silver bull market. So even though we're having a pullback now, which I expected and talked about, don't don't let the dissuade you if you've decided that that's you know, one of your tools in your toolbox. And certainly bringing it back around to this discussion, uh, if you're in a CBDC system, and you're in a total control social credit system in an AI based system. The only way that you may be able to get the things that you need are with a truly independent, non trackable money that's had 5,000 years of history and gold and silver are certainly those. So there may be another reason for you to consider that. Or one of the reasons you may want to consider it again, do your own research there. But for me, I definitely want to keep a little bit of gold and silver within arm's reach that I can get to in case something like this comes about, not only for the reset itself, but for the potential for uh, this type of system to be applied, you know, uh, over the top of the populace by bureaucrats scrambling for answers and technocrats who just happen to have it ready. Oh, look at that. We just happen to have this ready because we're technocrats. And we believe in the compassion of the human race and saving the human race. But to do that, we need to control you because it's your behavior that led to all this. And we're going to get the blame. I, I fear that. And, uh, you know, hopefully this has been a, just a good introductory uh, discussion. We'll got a lot more. Trust me on this. We're going to do a lot more about culture, politics, and just in general, what it means to be free. And that's why we've renamed the channel Freedom Report. Oh, one last thing. For those of you who asked me, yes, I did close the physical shop. The online shop is, is closed right now, but we're going we're gonna to do like a private list like I used to with a Google form uh, prior to opening the shop. So if you want medals or even want to sell some medals, We'll put that form out. That's coming very soon. Uh, it's just something that uh, I'm trying to get structured. So I still have, you know, on my wholesale context, I still have access to gold and silver. So if you want to do that through the channel, we will still sell some of that gold and silver, but just reducing costs. Because right now, gold and silver is not robust in the U.S. It will be. Uh, right now, all the shops are fighting for the same stackers. And so it didn't make sense for me to have that outlet, that expensive outlet, uh, and just kind of muddle along. Uh, it makes more sense to to provide that in a cheaper format for those that want to get signed up on that list. Uh, stay tuned in upcoming episodes. We'll announce how you can do that and how you can get access to that if you're still interested. And we'll pop that out as well. So thanks for all the questions and concerns on that. And by the way, I still go to coin shows and lots of meetings and conferences uh, in the gold and silver space. So just because we named this a Freedom Report doesn't mean we're not covering gold, silver, and finance. You know, every Tuesday, uh, barring me traveling or something like that, we will have the weekly market report and we'll talk about the economy. We'll talk about gold and silver. So just wanted to address that for people who had questions. I think we talked about it before, but I'll keep mentioning it until everybody, you know, who comes back to the channel and sees a video you may not seen those other videos. If it's been a while since you've been back. So we'll, we'll uh, I'll, I'll keep elaborating on that, but there would still be a way for you to get inexpensive pressure metals. I'm going to do it like a weekly deal. We'll, we'll redo that because I still have access to tons of wholesalers and mints and can get some good deals. And when I get good deals, I'll publish them. 
And certainly, you know, if you're looking for other gold and silver, we'll be there, you know, for your needs. But we're just cutting costs so we can bring you better deals. And then there'll be a point in time at which people probably ask me to go reopen a shop when when people are lining up out the door. Um, I suspect that could happen. Um, and I don't know if I'll open a shop, but I'll make it, you know, uh, we'll, we'll figure something out when that comes. Just biding time. But trust me, the gold and silver is going to come back. It is around the world. The, the amount of physical being sucked up around the world. It's just the United States. We're on this fiat system. A lot of people don't understand it. But there will be a day so, much sooner than a lot of people believe in which the gold and silver shops are going to run out of inventory. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we're we're going to be there to continue to be there for people that are stacking now and that people that have an interest in, in the future. We're just doing it in a lower cost format um, so that we can bring you lower costs so I can keep my costs competitive. Um, and I think that's the best way to do it. We'll do that. And again, we'll announce it here pretty soon in the next week or two when I get everything set up. All right, that's going to do it for the Freedom Report. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Once again, to reset, it is May 23rd, 2024. We talked about social credit system with the merging of that with CBDCs, the next generation network technology and AI and how that could be a total control system. And we tied in the economic part of that to how having gold and silver and potentially maybe even Bitcoin and other things, although that's electronic, by the way, but other things could potentially, you know, alternative currency solutions of your choice that you choose through your own research could allow you maybe to have a little bit of freedom outside that system because that system could be, you know, once you get a control system in place, it tends to overreach and go way beyond maybe what even the designers of the system originally intended as people with a control instinct, the controllers in society get a hold of it. So that is a, I think a clear and present danger to the Western world, even though we're seeing it implemented uh, in the East and not to sleep on it. It's going to be a big one. And I want to put that out as part of the conversation. Stay tuned next Tuesday. We do the weekly market report again. And the next Thursday, we've got more content for you on what's going on in the world, how it's changing and how it's affecting you to inform you so you can make your best choices toward maintaining and living your best free life. Once again, this has been Rob Keats with the Freedom Report. Until next time. Mm -hmm.